practice of the Dharma is ultimately aimed at awakening. It was the Buddha's own experience of awakening that formed the basis for the Dharma he taught. And also the aim of the Dharma he taught. To put an end of suffering. The end of suffering comes only with the experience of awakening, total awakening. But there are stages along the way. Stream entry is the first. And people like to focus on, well, what is it like to be a stream enterer, or what fetters has the stream enterer put aside, and exactly what does it mean to put these fetters aside or to be free from them. But the real issue is how to get there. Once you get there, then you know these. Once you get there, you know the answers to these questions. So you want to focus on what you do to get there. And there are four factors for stream entry. And some of them are so basic and ordinary that we tend to overlook them. But it's good to keep them in, in mind as you practice. The first is associating with people of integrity, or as the, the Pali phrase is, true people. The second is listening to the Dharma, listening to the true Dharma again. The third is appropriate attention, and the fourth is practicing the Dharma in line with the Dharma. These are basic instructions on how to be a good meditator. Even if you're not thinking about the possibility of awakening, you've got to focus on these issues. Who are you going to take as your teacher? Who are the people you want to hang around? We were talking earlier today about the monastic Sangha as the vehicle by which, or the vessel, by which the Buddha arranged for his dharma to last. You have this arrangement where people can devote their whole lives to the practice, and they're not off hidden in some mountain someplace or behind walls. There are places where lay people can come and go and associate with them as well. And this is important because if you live totally in a lay life, your, per your perspective on what's important, what's not important, gets all skewed. And money is the bottom line. The deadline is a deadline, I and mean, there's the word dead right in there. You don't meet the deadline, you're dead. In a situation like that, it's easy to get like those the kids we mentioned this afternoon. Ones who already had run run up against the law. And were put in a special education program and they were asked to measure the stressors in their lives on a scale from one to ten. How would you rate, say, the stress of Finding that your brother was shot by the unopposing gang, having to choose a dress to go to see a movie, deciding what to do after school when one group of friends wants you to go smoke pot with them and another group of friends wants to go off and do something else. In all the cases, the kids said 10, 10, 10, all the way down the line, no matter what. I mean, they were stressing out over everything. And a lot of this comes from not having association with people who can put things into perspective for you to help teach you how to look at the problems in your life, to realize which ones are important, which ones are not important. If you hang around good people, you begin to pick up a sense of this, even if they don't say specifically what's important, what's not important, but the questions they ask, the things they tend to talk about, the way they look at things, you begin to pick that up as well yourself, and that gives you a sense of what's major and what's minor in life, where the big issues are and where the, the non-issues are. So that right there is an important element in working towards stream entry, working towards your first taste of awakening. 
associating with people who have a sense of what's important, have a sense of proportion in their lives, who they themselves have made a, their top priority is awakening. Because again, there's a lot to learn from hanging around people like that. Even if they don't explain things explicitly, you just pick up habits, ways of looking at things from them. And hopefully when you're not associated with them and you're off away from them, you carry their attitudes with you. Remember the experience of coming to America with a John Fung and seeing America through his eyes. It was a new place, a very different place from the America I'd grown up in, partly because it had changed that much. It had been many years since I'd been back to America, but also just his way of looking at things. And look at the places where I'd grown up, the places where I'd hung out when I was a young adult. From his perspective, he's, he noticed different things. And I realized that having lived with him, I was beginning to see things in a different way as well. So that's an important part of the practice, is finding the right people to be with. As the Buddha once said, it's the whole of the holy life, is having admirable friends, colleagues, companions. That's the first of the factors. The second factor, listening to the true Dharma. Again, it's good to know how to tell what's true Dharma and what's not true Dharma, but also it's good to know how to listen. Then when you listen to a Dharma talk, sometimes there'll be things you agree with, sometimes there'll be things you don't agree with. But regardless, you want to listen with an attitude of respect, an attitude of openness, that maybe there is something here for you to learn. You don't have to agree with everything, but if you listen with an attitude of disrespect, a lot of times the speaker doesn't want to talk. So if you bring some respect to the Dharma, you have a chance to hear more. And then you have to decide what's true Dharma and what's not. And that's where the third factor comes in, appropriate attention, learning how to ask the right questions. In particular, the Buddha said the test for true Dharma is when you put it into practice that it leads to certain results. So that's what appropriate attention is, looking at things in terms of cause and effect. And particularly, you take a particular viewpoint and you apply it in your life, what's it going to lead you to do? Will it lead to more suffering or to less? That's the big issue right there, so asking questions in terms of Four Noble Truths. What's skillful and unskillful? So the Dharma is Dharma, not because you can defend it with rational arguments, or you can put up very elaborate lists of citations that this comes in that passage and that comes in this passage. Those aren't the criteria that the Buddha mentioned. mentioned if it leads to passion, then it's not dharma. If it leads to dispassion, then it is. Now, you take this as a, as a working hypothesis, and what happens? Does it lead you to being fettered to tie down to certain ways of thinking, or does it unfetter you? Does it make you lazy or energetic? And so on down the line. You learn to look at things in terms of cause and effect. It doesn't matter whether you like a particular idea or it seems reasonable. The issue is, okay, when you, if you adopt this as an attitude, as a working hypothesis, where does it lead you? And if you see that it leads in the right direction, okay, then you practice that dharma in line with it. And John Swat once noted that this was one of John Munn's favorite dharma talk topics, practicing the dharma in line with the dharma. In other words, you don't practice it in line with your likes and dislikes. Or you don't say, well, now that we're Americans, the dharma's going to have to change to suit us or, or whatever. You're more willing to change yourself to fit in with the Dharma than the other way around. 
you might wonder why Ajahn Mahan focused on this. Well, it wasn't the case that everybody in Thailand was already practicing the Dharma in line with the Dharma. Lots of customs had built up in Thai and Laotian Buddhism, which he began to realize were really contrary to the, the message, contrary to the customs and the noble ones. And there was a lot of pressure on him to fit in in terms of the old customs. That's what he was doing, taking the Vinaya out into the woods, practicing in line with the ascetic practices, the Dhudanga practices. And that was radical. His justification was that this is what the Dharma is. And the customs of Thailand and the customs of Laos were the customs of people with defilements, he said. You can't practice in line with those. You can't practice in line with the defilements because it just leads to more defilement, leads to more trouble, leads you away from any hope for awakening. And the Dharma says, okay, meditate. You meditate. It says to be careful about your actions, what you do, what you say. Okay, you're careful. You look at your addictions, whether they're whatever the addiction is, things you'd like to do, like to say, like to think, and look at them in terms of the Dharma. Okay, these things, do they lead to passion or dispassion, being fettered or unfettered? If you see they lead in the wrong direction, you've got to drop them. You can't side with them. You've got to learn how to side against your defilements. And it really is a matter of taking sides. So if you're interested in awakening, this is, this is how it comes about. You can't clone awakening. And how many books there are about what the awakened state is like. The idea that somehow if you could just crock the awakened state, there you'd be. But it doesn't work that way. You have to work through cause and effect. And these are the causes, associating with the right people, listening to the true Dharma, appropriate attention, learning how to ask the right questions, look at things in the right perspective, and then practicing the Dharma in line with the Dharma rather than in line with your defilements. You do what the Dharma demands. That's how stream entry comes about. That's how awakening comes about. That's how you can put an end to suffering. It may seem very pedestrian, but it is a path to walk. You can't fly there. You can't take a rocket. You just walk the path as it is. You're not too good, you're not too advanced, you're not too whatever to walk. We all have to walk the path. And once you're willing to submit yourself to the path, i.e. to the Dharma, in line with the Dharma, that's when you find out what the Dharma really is what its real potential is. That's how you answer your questions about awakening. 